Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. My name is Mark Roden and today we're doing top five best second miles to your car. If you remember two days ago, we did the top five best first miles to your car. And these are the top five that I think you should do after you do those first five because those first five, everybody knows those. So what, what's after them? What's after them? Like, what do you, what do I do? I'm stuck. I got you covered, baby. I got you covered. Today we're doing the top five best second mods. I hope you guys enjoy And if you do, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, check out the website, www.smoothstance.com slash shop to pick up any hats, shirts, or shorts for your apparel. Hello. Thank you guys. And let's get right into it. All right, so real quick, what I mean by second mods is something that you do after you get your car, the essentials that we talked about in the last video. Normally, after those first couple of mods is when we lose a lot of people in the car community because they lose interest on their builds since they realize how expensive things are going to be. But if you make it past that little, wow, this is a little bit expensive, yeah, maybe I should find another hobby kind of thought process that you got, well, howdy, welcome to the car community. Welcome to actually being in the car community. How does it feel? You're a car guy. Yeah, we get made fun of a lot by normal people, so it's pretty cool. Anyway, <laughs> the best second mod to do, in my personal opinion, out of all of them, if you get all those done, is going to be the radiator. A radiator, as we all know, is what makes sure that our car stays nice and cool. Our, our car may, may, may stay, a little, stay a little nice in the right temperature. And think of a radiator as like your water bottle while you're at work. Would you want your water bottle to be room temperature? Probably not, but it'll still get the job done, right? Well, that's pretty much what a stock radiator does. Like, yes, it works. It cools down your engine. But I mean, you're just going to make your car unnecessarily hot. An aftermarket radiator is like a water bottle that's been in the fridge all day. That's been freaking cooking, you know, and not cooking. It's actually the opposite of cooking, freezing. That's been freezing all day. It's nice and cooling and you don't need to drink as much water anymore. And so you're just like, oh, ooh, that's nice. That's nice. It fully, you know, you can feel it spread out in your body and you're like, wow, that's cold, nice cold water. That's like what an aftermarket radiator will do to your car. It also can make you lose a lot of uh weight there are some a lot of weight, uh, aftermarket radiators are a lot lighter than stock radiators they can be very very heavy but if you plan on making your car like actually fast then this is a must-have since your engine is going to be working out more than freaking arnold schwarzenegger if you don't get an aftermarket radiator just buy one <laughs> it doesn't hurt it also can help a lot with horsepower increase later on in your in your lifestyle right out of the gate it won't but we'll get into that later and the next best second modification that you can do to your car is going to be racing seats this one can arguably one be one of the first mods before anything else if you plan on immediately tracking your car if you're going to take the, your car bone stock and just start track daying it then i think actually the first mod is going to be the racing seats because you're gonna want to feel more planted this is one that's seen in literally every single build because stock seats are meant for comfort so you can move a bit when driving normally and you're not just strapped into one certain area like a guy that just got thrown into an insane asylum you're actually you know moving around and your your hips don't lie and you're just you're kind of going crazy in the car hell you might go over a bump and you might be sitting on your roof of your car it's going to be like an, a cartoon and all it's going to be around you is the seat the steering wheel and the gas pedals it's going to be like that and you're gonna be like wait what just happened if you have stock seats so you might want to invest in some aftermarket seats but you obviously don't want to like be bumping around but you obviously don't want to spend money on aftermarket seats if you're going to be just ripping up the McDonald's parking lot at 12 a.m. If that's the only thing you're doing and you're just taking this car out for a daily driver and you have fun with it every once in a while, then I do think that it, it is a mod that you can do later without with, with being able to get away with not doing it is what I'm trying to say. These can be the, so dirt cheap though for like some eBay ones. And to be honest with you, the eBay ones are not that bad. As long as the seat fits you and it keeps you in place when driving, then it's doing its job and it's pretty hard to mess that up. You're especially going to want a aftermarket seat if you're drifting or track daying, by the way, since you're literally throwing yourself into a blender, drifting specifically. If you're drifting, you're going, flying yourself around corners, flicking yourself into corners. An aftermarket seat is almost necessary actually to be drifting. If not, you're not gonna have control over the car and you're just, I recommend getting an aftermarket seat is what I'm trying to say. But yeah, if you want more stability while you're driving and more control of your car while you're driving, if you're driving spiritually at least, an aftermarket seat is a great second mod. 
The next modification for your puppy is going to be a body kit or any arrow of your choice. This one's completely up to you if you do it or not, but I think that everybody out there likes to modify the outside of their cars and make them look pretty at least just a little bit. All right, let's face it. Nobody wants to keep their cars bone stock, even if they have a bunch of horsepower. They're going to make their car look a little bit cool, and I think that's where the body kit or arrow comes into place. You don't need it. All right, you're not gonna need it unless you actually are track daying your car and you want like a functional spoiler and functional splitter. But for the most part, the arrow that we put on our cars is not functional arrow. It's just arrow that looks cool. <laughs> and so, yes, it's not a needed mod, a mod that you absolutely need to perform well, but it just looks cool. And us car guys, we like to look at our cars, obviously. So you slap some arrow on your car and make it look a little bit nicer. I think it's a great choice. Uh, it's body kits also can be pretty expensive though so if you're going to go strictly performance then i suggest that you skip this step either way there are some really good looking body kits out there for almost every single car in the world and it's completely up to you which one that you actually want to go with so take your time and also i recommend not looking at other people's opinions on the internet on which one is better because there are some body kits out there for your car that looks really really cool that isn't the most hyped body kit for example the 350z uh the most hyped is obviously the rocket bunny kit it's not my favorite because I did a little bit of research. Now I like a couple of other body kits. I probably will still do a Rocket Bunny kit just because I've always wanted to. But there are some other body kits out there that are still really, really cool. And so I don't think you should limit yourself to one just because of what you read on the internet if you're going to go with a body kit. Do research, look up random body kits for your car. And if you end up liking the one that's the most popular, that's fine. But just check some beforehand, especially if you're going wide body because you can't go back on that. <laughs> All right, so the fourth best second mod, and that's kind of confusing, is going to be your headers. We talked about doing your exhaust last video, and technically headers are a part of your exhaust, but most of the car community usually separates these two, and they do them separately. Uh, if you already bought headers, though, with your exhaust, like if you bought your exhaust last video, like I told you you should, you're doing your homework, you're buying your exhausts, and you got headers with them, and it's not a cat back, then that that that, that kind of skips this part you don't have to watch this part of the video but i still recommend if you didn't and you bought a cat back exhaust and you don't have any headers on there stock headers that's where this part comes into play um headers are the part of the exhaust that first bolts onto your engine so it's the part that does the most work too it also gets the most hot and it gives you the best horsepower gains they can be pretty damn expensive for a little metal piece and they're going to be annoying as hell to install but once you got it done, you will have pretty much full bolt-ons done to your car, which is, I guess, stage two. I don't know how that works. Is it stage one or stage two if you go full bolt-ons? I honestly have no idea. But you have a solid built car at this point in your life. Also, headers look really, really stick sick when they're like stainless steel and they're just sitting inside the engine bay. Like, oh my lanta. They look mean when done right. They also have some of those titanium, like tuner exhaust like the headers that are all like burnt and they're blue this look really cool too but anyway they actually do increase a lot in horsepower more than any other part of your exhaust you're going to want these out of everyone that's why that's the reason why they're the most expensive but i still think you should do your exhaust first and then go into the headers afterwards just because exhaust just sounds so cool man like come on now but yeah i think he headers is a great fourth second mod to do and finally for the second mods list the last of your second mods that i think you should do to your schwippy it's going to be getting a tune this is something that quite literally needs to be done especially if you listened to what i told you and you bought all the parts that i told you to buy with all these added performance parts your engine is going to want to increase airflow because of the intake it's going to cool down easier because of the radiator and it's going to run much better because of your exhaust but your computer is going to restrict it from doing that since it has no way of telling that there's performance parts on your car now that is kind of not that true in newer newer cars if it's like a high performance car your computer will maybe be able to pick up on it and be like okay well we gotta balance this out but i still recommend even if you have like a 2021 supra i still recommend going and getting it tuned after you do these parts because you can get so much more horsepower gains out of it especially if you bring it to a correct tuner tuning can be pretty expensive when done right but you could bring it to some shop that does it for a, a freaking penny on the dollar and it's going to be some backyard tuner that you you just gotta trust them you know <laughs> just get some get some freaking like uh somebody that knows the guy and is like hey 
I recommend going in your car tuned by this guy. And if he got his car tuned, most chances are he won't mess it up. Chances are he knows what he's doing. And chances are he's going to charge you a lot. And I mean a lot less than a shop is that like specializes in doing it. Sometimes it can even be free if you're close enough to the guy. Like if you guys are like best friends, then honestly, they, he might just do it for you for free, which would be a blessing. Because like I said, tuning can be really, really expensive. But if you put all those other mods on the car but didn't get a tune, you're going to see some changes and yes, you will be happy, but you won't be able to get like the full effect from the mods unless you actually tune your car to maximize the capabilities of these new parts. So you see online that the part that you're about to buy and it says it has a horsepower gain of 20, well, you're gonna put your the, it on the car and it might give you a horsepower gain of seven. Once you get it finally tuned is when you actually unlock the full potential of the car and the DCU is really restricting is what I'm trying to say and getting it tuned is going to completely cancel that. Once you do that, also you're going to be FBO and tuned, which is a flex, everybody loves saying that, and you're definitely going to notice the horsepower gains way, way more than when you just put them on there and didn't get it tuned. So if you want your car to be fast, but without turbocharging it, and you don't want it to be super quick to the point where it's like so fast that you can't drive it anymore, if you listen to everything I told you to buy in these last two lists and you get it tuned at the end of it, you'll be very, very happy with your car's performance. But that is the end of this list. I hope you guys enjoyed. Today I was all over the place. I don't know what was going on with me. I kept like messing up my words, so I'm sorry about that. But yeah, uh, this is the best second mod to do to your car. Let me know if I missed anything, because I'm sure there are some out there that somebody's gonna be like, you missed this, bro. And you're probably right. But I think these are personally the best ones that I would go after first if I was new and got a brand new stock car. These are the ones. Oh, excuse me. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Like I said before, check out the website, baby, www.smoothstance.com slash shop. Like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Das Danya, and have a nice night.